G'day guys, I'm Matt Brand, <laughs> and this is the 2021 Isuzu D-Max. One D-Max was just released, and yes, I'm a little bit late to the party, but being probably the most anticipated Ute release of the year, I'm, I'm pretty glad I'm reviewing it. And honestly, there is a lot to unpack with this Ute, so we better just get into it. If you do enjoy the video, please do go down there and hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell as well. I release an awesome new car review every single week. Of course, if you enjoy the video, like the video, it really, really helps small creators like me. And I have left timestamps in the description below. You can also click on the video and see the chapters in there, hopefully anyway. So if you wanna skip ahead to a certain part, feel free to do so. And let's just get straight into it. Starting with the front, and, and I don't know how, but Isuzu has managed to make a car that the more you look at it, the more you see. At first glance, it looks like almost any other ute, but then you actually start to take a look at it and oh, wow. For example, I love the double chrome grille. It's big, it's bold, it's beautiful. Also up the top of the double grille is the Isuzu badge, which is on proud display. Flanking the grills, I guess you could say, <laughs> are the headlights and they're really cool. The daytime running lights especially. Love it. They are nice and bright as well. The low beams are bright. The high beams maybe could be a bit better, but it's a very common modification to put an extra light on the car, like a light bar or, or something like that. Below the lights are the turning indicators and also the fog lights, which are LED and they're bright. And otherwise there isn't too much going on with the front of the Isuzu D-Max, but that's not a bad thing. You don't want something to be overstyled. I think it's the perfect amount of styling. Moving on to the side and, and yes, it's a dual cab ute. And, they kind of all look the same, but you might notice a big differentiator and that's the 18 inch wheels that are on the LSU and I think they look really good. They actually kind of remind me of a Mercedes Maybach wheel, like the brushed aluminium just slab onto the side. I love them. Not everyone does though. Thankfully, there are options to, to change it out if, if you don't like. Down the bottom is a side step, which contrasts really well with this basalt black paint. Basalt. Basalt? Basalt? I don't know. And you might also notice two pretty prominent features, the snorkel that's just been bolted on to the side and also the roof rails up top. Actually, these are just two of a huge amount of accessories that you can get with the D-Max. An accessory list that could probably rival a Porsche or an Audi. But it's actually a good thing because they're all pretty much common aftermarket additions anyway. So you can do it at the factory or the dealer, wherever they install it. And it's pretty much no hassle. And also there is a big four x four decal badge right at the back. So you can let all those peasants know that you off-road. Now, a big challenge for Ute manufacturers is getting the rear styling done right because they have to follow rules, regulations, and also there isn't actually all that much bodywork to play with. But I think what Isuzu have done with it is very good. For example, the tail lights look great, especially at nighttime with their LED kind of strips that run within them. And then there's so much chrome within them too that they just, they pop. It helps the rear to, to stand out. Excuse me here while I give it a bit of the, uh, the old sauce. <laughs> oh my god. Drifting in a ute. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? I like how the rear is stamped out as well. It really does help to break up the otherwise pretty square design. And of course you get even more chrome with the chrome grab handle, which also has the camera within it. While we're here, we might as well talk about the tub. It's 1,570 millimeters long, 1,530 millimeters wide, and between the wheels, it's 1,122 millimeters wide. Certainly not class leading, but it's a usable amount of space for sure. Overall, I really like the looks of the new D-Max. I think it's a perfect evolution of the last D-Max. In fact, in my opinion, it's one of the best looking utes you can buy today. And honestly, that's mainly because it's not over styled and not too aggressive and outlandish. It's it's almost just right. But I'm curious to know what you guys think. What do you think looks better? This Isuzu D-Max or do you prefer the looks of the Ford Ranger? In the comments section, I've left a voting poll. So do go down there and vote now. Take a corner, probably a little bit too hard. <laughs> now I want to move on to the interior and I want to start with the overall look, layout and feel. I'll start by saying this. Wow, wow, wow. It is incredible how much of a difference this is compared to the old D-Max. It is actually insane just how premium it feels. There are soft touch materials in places where you just don't see it in other dual cab utes. Yes, there are still some hard scratchy plastics dotted around the interior, but that's so not uncommon. And then there is just the design. Everything is neat, tidy, nothing 
nothing rattles and shakes. I love the faux stitching on the faux leather dash. It looks very premium, as does the door, and it extends everywhere else. The seats, the steering wheel, the center armrest. The only way I can really describe it to you without you being in here is it's like sitting in a Volkswagen SUV and not a Japanese truck. But that's the experience you get. Wow. Then there is the ergonomics and practicality, both of which are very good. In terms of ergonomics, the steering wheel is tilting and telescoping. You can easily get it into a comfortable position. And the seat, although it is manual adjustment, again, it's easy to get into a comfortable position. You also have lumbar support, which is probably the most important part. And then practicality is, is what shocks me. The amount of storage spaces they have crammed into the interior is, is nothing short of incredible. For example, you of course have your two cup holders in the center and then you have another two cup holders hidden underneath the vents. That will help cool or heat your drinks depending on what you feel like. Then there is the glove box, or should I say glove boxes. It's a split glove box with a bottom and top part. So you get extra storage up top. Talking about up top, on top of the dash, you have a very large storage center as well. And then you have a storage center next to your knee. You of course have your center armrest, which has plenty of storage and you have a little tray for your phone. So there are so many different places you can store your items. In terms of IO, you have a USB port up front. You've also got a 12 volt socket and an auxiliary cable in. Visibility is awesome as well. You get a clear sight out of all windows. And to be honest, even if you don't have a clear sight, you have blind spot monitors that comes as standard across the range. Then there are these seats. Now on the X-Terrain model, you do get leather seats in this LSU, which is second from the top, you get cloth seats. But honestly, I have not cared in the slightest. They're very comfortable seats like really, really comfortable. They support you in all the right places and they're not as scary to sit in as they might look. As I said, adjustment is great. The lumbar support is absolutely fantastic and they look good. Really zero complaints there. Talking about the steering wheel and wow, this has to be no joke, the most premium steering wheel I have ever held onto. It's got like the most soft and supple leather. The design is great as well. I love the white stitching on it. But it's more than just a pretty face. It's very functional too. On the left-hand side, you have your media and your phone controls. On the right-hand side, you have your safety system controls and you've also got your controls for the instrument cluster. Speaking of safety, because that is a massive selling point of this new Isuzu D-Max, this is now the safest ute in Australia. I'm pretty sure you have every single active safety system under the sun, from adaptive cruise control in the automatic models, to lane keep assist, to autonomous emergency braking, blind spot monitoring, the work. And all of that except for adaptive cruise control is standard across the entire range. And a lot of blokes out there will be like, oh, I don't care about safety, but your family probably care about you. They want you to get home. Safety matters. Even if you never have to use it, it matters. Anyway, spiel over, it's, it's a great steering wheel. <laughs> and then there is the instrument cluster. And, and yes, it's not the greatest instrument cluster out there, but it's all right. On the left-hand side, you have your tachometer. On the right-hand side, you have your speedometer, though both are comically small. They do have big font, though. They're easy to read. And then in the center, you have an LCD display that has enough information on it, is functional enough and, and easy to read in, in bright lights and Good graphics, no complaints. Another major upgrade though is this nine inch infotainment display. I'm gonna get my one complaint out of the way and that's in bright light, it can be almost impossible to see. But other than that, it's a great little unit. It has the holy quadrility, whatever the 4-1 of trilogy is, of navigation, digital radio, Android Auto, and Apple CarPlay. I've said it before, I'll say it again, that's all you need to have a functional system. Thankfully as well, it is very responsive to the touch. Menus are easy to navigate, although there really aren't any. The graphics are okay, they're, they're nothing amazing, especially as it can get washed out, as I said, in bright sunlight. But it's such a big upgrade over the last generation Isuzu D-Max, and as I said, it's functional. Thumbs up. Connected to this nine inch infotainment display is an eight speaker sky sound sound system. Now, why does it get that name? Well, there are speakers in the roof, but honestly, this is one of the best sound systems I've heard in a ute. It, it is incredible. I don't know how, but it is. What's also incredible are the air conditioning controls. Why? Because they're super functional. The LCD there is probably better than the nine inch infotainment display. And the buttons are super well damped. It feels really premium to touch. But again, it feels like you're sitting in a German SUV. Wow, I'm, I'm honestly shocked, genuinely. Of course, there are seats back there. They have the exact same style of cloth seats as the front, but that's not a bad thing. They're very comfortable and they look great. Better yet though, with this seat, even all the way back, I can fit behind myself and I'm five foot 11 
That is impressive for a dual cab ute. Plenty of headspace, as you would expect. And it's also very practical. You have two air vents back there and a USB port and a little cubby for something. I don't know what would fit back there, but something. Of course, you can lift up the back seats and there's even more storage spaces hidden underneath those seats. So it's a very practical car. For those of you who don't know what made the Isuzu Ute so popular, especially here in Australia, was its engine. The previous generation was fitted with the Ford JJ1 engine, which was a three liter turbocharged four cylinder engine that was known for just how reliable it was. Thankfully, the new engine in the D-Max is an evolution of the Ford JJ1. This is now the Ford JJ3, which is again a three liter four cylinder turbocharged diesel engine. And even though it's technically an evolution, the only thing it shares with the Ford JJ1 are the con rods. That's it, everything else, new. So a big question I'm gonna be asked is, how reliable is the Isuzu D-Max? And unfortunately, because it's so new, I can't tell you. Isuzu have claimed they've driven over 4 million kilometers testing this new engine, and apparently it's even more reliable. Time will tell. Thankfully, there are some gains to having this new engine, of course. It does pump out 140 kilowatt of power and 450 newton meters of torque. That's a respectable bump of 10 kilowatt of power and 20 newton meters of torque from the previous engine. And even though power and torque is actually a bit less than the majority of its competitors, it doesn't feel slow. And that's really thanks to having peak torque come in at just 1600 RPM. So you get 450 newton meters of torque pretty much as soon as you put your foot down. And so off the line, it feels sprightly. Now power is sent through a six speed automatic transmission. You can get a manual transmission in, in all variants except for the X terrain, but probably the automatic is the way to go. It's buttery smooth. It's a really great transmission. And it always seems to have you right at the perfect amount of torque. You're always in that torque band so you can get pretty instant torque from a go. The zero to 100 kilometer an hour or zero to 62 miles an hour is, whoa. <laughs> oh, it's around about 10 seconds, but I'll tell you what, it, it feels faster. And as I said, just having access to that torque at a low range makes this car feel so fast, so much faster than it actually is. Handling is unfortunately, <laughs> Uh, handling is, is quite light, but uh, you can have a lot of fun. Suppose you can have a lot of fun in any car, but I'm having a lot of fun. Anyway, I do wish handling was maybe a little bit more direct. <laughs> I wish it was a little bit more direct because it is just, it's very light. You know, I can very easily turn the steering wheel with, you know, not much effort. I look like I'm being blessed. Blessed. In terms of suspension, well, it's a dual cab ute. It is very well tuned though, I'll give them that. It actually is very comfortable, especially when there's zero weight over the rear wheels at the moment. So you do get a bit of jittery and bouncing, but nothing uncommon. The front end feels firm and stable, it's good. Now, what about four wheel driving? Well, full disclaimer here, because of COVID-19 and because of lockdowns, I cannot go four wheel driving. I'm sorry about that, I promise you I will as soon as I can. I can't control that. But I will talk to it a bit because I've spoken to some Journo friends and I'll give you my opinion. Of course, you do have four wheel drive in this Isuzu D-Max. You've got four high and four low. Also new for 2021 is a lockable rear diff. So instead of using a traction control system, now it's actually got a physical lockable diff. You have 240 millimeters of ground clearance, which is pretty good for the class and 800 millimeters of weighting depth, which is very good for the class. I can only imagine with this snorkel, I don't know the exact figure, but that would probably go up. You have an approach angle of 30.5 degrees, a ramp over angle of 23.8 degrees, and a departure angle of 24.2 degrees. Again, all of which are, are pretty decent. The reality is if you're buying a D-Max for off-roading, you're probably going to lift it. You're probably going to put on bigger wheels. You know, those dimensions are, are probably going to change. But as it stands, it's a capable enough off-roader. It's, it's pretty good. And then with towing, you have an unbrake capacity of 750 kilograms and a braked towing capacity of actually three and a half tons. That's pretty good. It's actually <laughs> very good. So the question you probably want to know is, is it worth it? Well, first of all, you do get a six year warranty, which is odd. Usually it's five or seven, but you get a six year warranty and seven years of roadside assistance. There's that lucky seven number. Like all Utes, there are so many variants of the D-Max, but in terms of a dual cab D-Max, they start at $46,462 drive away. And this LSU here, specced with the black paint, you've also got a snorkel, the roof rails, and you've also got a braking control system for your hill descent. Well, that's $65,299 Australian dollars 
drive away. The D-Max is actually very reasonably priced, very much in line with its competitors. And although it might not be the class leader in how it drives, the interior and the safety tech are what make this probably the best ute on sale at the moment. Big claim, I know. If you want a true workhorse that will get you from point A to B safely and in class leading comfort, then the D-Max is right for you. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please do go down there and hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you around. Click that like button as well and comment down below. What do you think of the new D-Max? Why don't you click over there on one of the videos that YouTube thinks that you'll actually enjoy watching. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next week.